Hey guys, it's Michael here. This is part two of the articulating truck build that I'm working on. Uh, this one we mainly focus on the hinge. This is kind of the backbone of this tractor here. And it's probably a little overkill, a little overbuilt. I kind of had to switch gears in the plan and redesign my hinge a little bit while I was building it and expanded everything out a little further. But it is the backbone of this thing and I would hate to load gravel on this thing and have this snap apart. Um, once I cut the last four gussets on here, it's gonna be about 46 pieces, including all the bushings I had to mill on my lathe. Um, so if you're interested in the video, stick around and check it out. And another thing, I'll go into a little more detail. This isn't the final resting spot. Of course, it's gonna be on the back side of the front frame, but I'm actually gonna cut the frame back, I believe, and shift it this way a little further. And I'll go into a little more detail why later in the video. So stick around, check it out, you guys. All right, here's a real quick recap on part number one in case you guys missed that part. Got a Subaru transmission here and some running gear, trying to figure out the layout for the frame. Rolled over to Harbor Freight, picked up a 13 horsepower Predator engine, and that's gonna be a four to one gear reduction. Cutting out some frame rails here. Pretty happy how it's going along so far. And uh, running my CNC plasma table, cutting almost all the bracketry for this thing on there. It's gonna be utilized for this whole dump truck articulation build. And uh, after we got these parts hung, all the hubs here, we actually start working on hanging the transmission and got all those mounts figured out. So uh, it kind of gets us wrapped up from part one up to speed. So here's part two, guys. All right, got some quarter inch uh, plate steel on the cutting machine. Paid about a hundred bucks for this sheet, it's two by four. And what I'm gonna do is fire the torch up here. We're gonna cut out the very first mid plate that's for the pivot. So we're gonna get cutting here. All right, so let's see how that turned out. Well, that's pretty cool. Partway through this, uh, cutting some of these brackets out, I realized I had a two foot by four foot sheet and a lot of the parts for the swing joint were eight inches wide. I had them uh, drawn up previously to buy in the sheet. And after cutting some parts out, I realized I would have been a lot better off actually making the swing joints maybe seven and a half inches wide. It would have utilized a two foot wide piece of metal a lot better with a little kerf on the edges. But uh, live and learn, it's one of those things that kind of goes that way sometimes. So here's those two quarter inch plates. Uh, just clamped together. It's pretty neat here. This is uh, dropped in so I can fill this in with weld and this is for a carrier bearing and this drops down so I can put part of the plate out here for the pivot point. This plate here stops inside the frame and I got this dropped down a little bit to fill this area in with the good weld and this would have gone out here in ideal situations, but the plate I got, I bought recently, was only 24 inches wide, and to figure out the layout to get everything on there possibly, I had to draw it short and draw it to 24 inches. What I'm gonna end up doing here is just cutting some scrap out to cap the rest of this in. So one of the biggest reasons I went for quarter inch for most of my pivot point here was uh, consumable life. I have a 45 amp plasma torch here. Piercing quarter inch takes about a second and a half, much thicker and you get a lot of blowback on the tips and it can damage the consumables pretty quick. And I also wanted really clean cuts, nice sharp edges. I didn't want to get into all these holes and have to die grind them out to get the precise cuts. And quarter inch I can cut very cleanly and fairly quickly. Anything I wanted thicker, uh, doubled up to half inch, I would just double up two plates and weld them together so uh, that's kind of the reason I went for quarter inch on all this. Here I'm cutting up some quarter inch scrap plate that I found in a dumpster. Uh, anytime I can salvage any type of metal I'm always going to use it on all my projects. Here's another small piece of quarter inch that I salvaged and the center hole there is going to be for the pivot point. Next off we're going to fire up the bandsaw and start cutting some bushing material. This is some drawn over mandrel tubing I ordered on eBay. Firing up the lathe now and cutting six of these bushings. So a metal lathe is something I always wanted, never had access to one, never owned one. None of my friends had them at the time. So about three years back, I kind of decided a mindset change. I'm going to start saving up some money, even if it takes me a year to get something. And uh, the whole time I was saving, I kept seeing little lathes pop up on Craigslist that I could almost afford, but never had quite enough money. 
finally about a year into it this thing popped up and it was a 13 by 40 lathe nothing super fancy it's made in taiwan probably back in the mid 80s but it suits my needs completely it cuts every part i need it to and uh, actually utilize it to drum up a little side work and it's a great little machine to have in the shop i've been super happy with it so kind of a mindset change guys even if you don't have a good piece of equipment but you want something like a good welder or a lathe or anything like that set some money aside it's going to take a little while but sooner or later you're going to make that goal happen i want to thank my good friend dave for hooking me up with a bunch of this scrap quarter inch the uh leftover throwing stars no not really they're actually from um this would be pretty heavy duty throwing stars they're actually from some pretty awesome artistic table uh, legs i'll show you a picture of those in this video here that he makes these are off cuts and quarter inch scrap which i'm going to be using here so if you guys are very familiar with my channel you've probably seen me utilizing this little cnc table in the last four or five videos it's an awesome tool to have in my shop i've been really happy with it so far if you want to know any more information if you look click on the link in my description to the langmuir systems website you can read up quite a bit more about these tables and also there's a mike festiva promo code down there so i uh, definitely highly recommend you utilize that it's a win-win situation saves you 100 bucks and check out and gives me a little bit of a kickback as well it's uh, really nice to have that tool to be able to cut parts like that and duplicate them every time i really enjoy having it in my shop and i definitely think it's a tool worth looking into for yours All right, got most of the parts. I need to start on working on the pin arrangement and the hinge. Pretty excited about this. Got the bushings cut last night. Nice. Got a little temporary table set up here for welding on. I got all my points. I think I need all the parts cut for the pivot point. Uh, it will get me to the bearing or articulation bearing, but not the rear half of the frame yet. That will come later. That will be pretty easy compared to this stuff. I've cut uh, six bushings all together. I got a few more things like some gussets I can cut later but I got all the main components to put this together and I've kind of gone over a little bit of changes before I cut the parts out. Uh, I've kind of reconfigured my pin system and the bushings in here. So guys I'd like to take a moment and recommend two YouTube channels that I think are pretty awesome and if you like my channel I think you guys would like these two. Uh, the first one is Moto Mule and uh, Mike down there at Moto Mule is a hell of a fabricator. He's a plus guy. He just really does good work. And he's right now in the process of building a mini grave digger 4x4 monster truck for his kids. And actually mini's not the right word for it. It's massive. So if you guys are interested in my videos and see the stuff I'm building, I think you'll really like his channel too. Uh, there will be a link below in my description to his channel. That's Moto Mule. And another channel I'd recommend checking out, I've come across a few months ago and I really like, is Refiner's Forge. It's a blacksmithing channel and he just does really good quality work. It's just a pleasant thing to watch. I've done metal fabrication for years, but I maybe have overlooked the blacksmithing side of things. And it's pretty inspiring. It's pretty neat to see that. And it's something I would definitely like to get into down the road a little bit more. So if you guys are interested in those channels, please check them out. And if you enjoyed them, then maybe consider subscribing and hitting like on some of their videos, guys. So I had the majority of the parts cut here and the bushings cut and uh, it was a little funky timing. It was around the holidays. Uh, my son got sick. I got sick. Our dog passed away and I wasn't in the shop very much for just holiday things and I was trying to figure out what I had going before I took some time off down there and I was a little lost. Maybe my head was a little foggy from the flu still. It's a little more difficult when you got a video camera there, you're trying to bring people along and not make major mistakes. Like I didn't weld anything improper, but man, I was kind of sweating it for a little while there. This thing, this whole joint got a little more complex than it should have been. And uh, just taking that time off and not writing a bunch of notes down um, just made it kind of difficult. but. I ended up pulling it off and not making any major mistakes and having to grind a bunch of extra stuff off of it. So I was happy about that one. So 
so like I said earlier, this whole joint got a little more complex than I originally planned. I had a design set up, and I think it was going to work pretty good. My buddy, he's a good guy. He definitely is very good at designing stuff, but he also likes to build things extra stout he kind of assured me that it didn't think it was going to work it's going to fall apart so i kind of went back to the drawing board and readapted some things and just this thing became way more complex than i ever wanted it to be so in the second time around on a different smaller tractor i'm just going to utilize a front axle joint on a f-250 i have a parts truck and i think for a smaller tractor it would work fine i've seen a lot of russian vehicles where they utilize on small tractors a lot of pivot points from steering components and i think that would have been fine but you know live and learn i think this thing's going to be stout i think it's going to be a great joint it's just a little more complex than i was originally hoping for So I'm getting ready to weld up this joint here and because metal does some funny things with expansion and contraction when you weld it I'm actually taking the joint apart here and dropping these little tiny razor blades in here It's just an added bit of insurance So when I weld this thing up tight, I don't want to have to cut it back apart because it's binding So I'm throwing those razor blades in there. I'm dropping the joint back together I'm gonna to clamp everything solid weld it and then once it's all welded up nice and tight pull out the razor blades Alright, so I took this back apart and pulled out the two razor blades I had in here as just shims to kind of keep it off this other material a little bit. I got this one gusset cut, I'll have to cut another one, but it's going to fit in right here. And it's going to strengthen this up, I'll probably run another one down the center just to give it a little bit more strength. I know this joint's probably overkill, but I'd rather make it stronger now than deal with anything bending later. One hinge down, another pivot to go. It took way too long setting up the camera trying to think all this thing through to kind of bring you guys along. So. I'm going to weld up the secondary one, work on alignment, and I still need, this is a temporary pin, I still need to cut some new pins on the lathe. Yeah, I'll bring you guys back when this thing's about wrapped up and tell you if I had any struggles along the way. Well, I got that whole bottom section finished up here. I still got a lot of gussets and things to add to it, but I'm ready to put this back bearing mount, the four hole mount. And I got it shimmed out with a 16th inch uh, little shim here, just because when I put it on here normally without the shim, it was kind of clamping this hinge too tight. So this is about the right uh, distance I need it to be, so I'm going to get tack welding. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. So right here I'm cutting off two slabs of metal to turn them into uh, some hinge pins and it uh, seems like a simple process but uh, these pins there's a little bit more going on with them. They're actually you know of course stepped down so they will fit through the bushings but I'm cleaning up the face surface of it right here and I'm actually going to drill two different holes in this thing on both sides but they're not going to go all the way through. The bottom hole is going to be for a, a retainment bolt, it's going to be a 3 8 tapped and it's gonna have a little step as well so it fits on some washers to kind of keep the pin from ever backing out. 
and on the top side I'm gonna actually drill a larger hole first it goes in about maybe half inch or so and it's gonna be for a zerk fitting to be tapped in there and then I'm gonna drill in further but not all the way through for a smaller hole for the grease from the zerk fitting to go down towards the center of the pin of course at the very end I'm gonna drop this thing on my drill press and drill out a center little hole for that grease to come out in the center of the bushing so uh, yeah there's a little bit more going on with these things pins cut and these holes on the bottom are tapped to 3 8 and they are not they don't go all the way through the grease fitting they stop before that I got the little grease fitting uh, hole and the zerk on here that zerk actually should put grease right out to the center of the bushing so I figured from that point grease should work its way out into all the other joints it's got some parts that showed up I ordered these things from surplus center some uh, one inch bearings these are pillow block bearings uh, they're gonna be for the carrier or inside of here uh, to support the drive line the u-joint and I ordered this little front bearing this is going to go on the front of the stub out for the input shaft and the transmission on a plate to support it because when there's a load on the chain or belt or however I decide to drive it that transmission isn't designed to actually carry a load on that thing without it being supported surplus center is a pretty decent site to order from when you have a wide range of things but they really get you uh, shipping cost is ridiculous so I'll put some links below of some of the tools I use on this job some helpful things I find for welding like clamps and things put some uh, links below for for some of these bearings on Amazon. I haven't ran them yet, but I think they're all coming from China, probably all the same kind of quality. They're a little bit cheaper on there, and if you got Prime, the free shipping, which is a big time. This took me over a week to get. You can have them in two days if you got Prime. Even if you don't order them on there, you get the proper names for, you know, four bolt flange, pillow block bearing, those things, and you can search other sources. Even though the auto industry switched over to metric system in the early 90s it's really hard to find certain metric in this this country i don't know what the deal is at least in the town i live in they carry a small range of metric and a ton of standard that's great or imperial anyways uh i needed some fine thread 14 mil allens i ordered these about maybe a week ago finally showed up it's kind of ridiculous just for like 350 a bolt but uh Anyways, these are going to be for mounting the bearing right up here. It's really coming together. I got my pins installed and I wanted to get those cut and installed. I'm going to go through here and finish off all these tack welds and we're going to mount this bearing pivot point down on the end of the frame and probably wrap up this video pretty soon. So here's a funny little story. I was working on this to get this shot this night and I was trying to finish off all the weld seams trying to kind of consider where I put my heat into it and I did a bunch of time lapse here I had music going in the shop half the time I had earplugs in and you know well, last time I set my gas my argon co2 gas flow was like a few months ago it's usually always fine well it's fine until you have a three-year-old in your shop and decides to turn the regulator a bunch I blew through I had I think 800 psi in that tank and by the time I was done within an hour I had less than 40 psi yeah if you got a little three-year-old in the shop and he's playing the drums here and there and he walks past the regulator uh count on him probably turning it yeah he cranked this thing up i usually weld like 15 maybe 20 and he had this thing cranked up to like 50. i would have probably noticed if i didn't have the music going in the shop and had uh, you know earplugs in but <laughs> lesson be learned i'm gonna keep checking my regulator after this point on if he's in the shop okay guys so I messed up a little earlier when I was doing all that uh, time lapse of uh, me welding it. I was welding all over the thing trying to kind of consider where I'm putting the heat in, not to bend stuff too much from uh, warping. And I didn't have my last four gussets, there's these big C gussets that go around the back here. I didn't have them cut yet. And I should have cut them before I started welding everything. 
took a few days off on this project. I came back to it. I should have made more notes. And what happened was when I finished up the inside seam on this thing, this joint, this part kind of came together and pinched in the hinge. As you guys saw, I was trying to move the hinge around and a bunch of the video was going good and then all of a sudden it got tight and I was had a struggle to get this thing apart and that's no good. So I had to resolve that problem. I cut my four gussets, the big C gussets around the back here. Should have had them cut earlier. So I took some all thread. I had to actually take this and open it up again. So what I did was put this all thread in here, some washers and some nuts. Open it up beyond the point I wanted it to be at by maybe an eighth or a little more. Tack welded my C plates on here, my gussets. And I'm gonna pull all thread out now and it should drop into that thing and actually not bind up. So we'll pull this off in a moment after I get these welded and see how it goes. All right, you guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Like I said in the beginning, this isn't going to be the final resting place. I'm actually looking to move this thing further forward of six or eight inches closer to the back of the transmission. In the original first video, I talked about cutting these frame rails five feet, felt they were a little on the long side. And that's why I only put this temporary bar across here to hold it in position. Because I really want to move this thing closer to the transmission, shorten up the front a little bit. I don't want this thing to be super ridiculously long. And another reason is I'm kind of in a holding pattern, hurry up and wait. I ordered this front CV driveline from a Suzuki Sidekick online and it's going to take like a week to get here. So until I have that part in hand, it actually looked like a pretty good driveline to work with to adapt for the center joint. And it's got a flange on one side where I can, like a three bolt flange, I can make another one on the CNC table. So I'm waiting for that. So I'm not going to cut anything back until I have that driveline in hand and really come up with a solid plan for what I'm doing here. So yeah, in the next video, we'll be for sure cutting the frame back, welding this on permanently, and hopefully starting on the rear half. Well, another thing I want to show you guys, originally I wanted to do a, a F250 um, hydraulic steering box because I had some of those parts, but my buddy Dave tracked this down from another friend. It's an old steering wheel assembly with the hydraulic valve body on it off an old piece of equipment. It was in his buddy's garage for like the last 10 years. The guy gave it to Dave and looks pretty cool i think this is going to actually work really well to adapt up here for a steering wheel when i get finished with this down the road at some point if unless i'm really burned out i would like to build a small articulating tractor much smaller one than this for my son when he gets a little older and that's where we'll be utilizing for sure a power steering box from f250 on there and instead of building a, another complicated joint like this i originally wanted to use a front four wheel drive assembly off of a f250 because i got a f250 parts truck and it would be the whole front end with the drive line going through it, the hub for the articulation joint, and the pivot joint would actually be the steering knuckle. So um, I think on that tractor we built for my son, we will utilize that stuff. All right, you guys, please hit like and subscribe. Until next time, take care. Bye.